This month is the fifth anniversary of The Basics, and for this birthday episode there was only one subject I could possibly cover. You've heard me say it over and over again, and this week it's finally time for The Basics on The Underbase Saga. The story of the cosmically powered Starscream. The Underbase Saga was a four-part story published in Marvel's Transformers comic book between August and November 1988. Written by Bob Budiansky and illustrated by Jose Delbo, the story ran from issue number 47 to the double-sized issue number 50 and revolved around the treacherous Starscream's efforts to acquire the power of the massive Cybertronian database, the Underbase. The Underbase was the greatest storehouse of information in the universe. Constructed long ago by Cybertronian philosophers out of patterns of light, as it grew over the ages, the depth of the knowledge it contained became so cosmically vast that it could grant godlike power to any who bathed in its glow. To prevent the misuse of its legendary power, it was guarded by a sect of neutral Cybertronians led by High Circuit Master Boltax, who converted his body into a mountain-sized temple to contain it. In the early days of the war, Optimus Prime and Megatron fought over the Underbase, until Prime, realising that it was far too dangerous for any one being to possess, made the decision to launch the Underbase into space to put it beyond Megatron's reach. The Underbase drifted through the galaxy for millions of years, its energy destroying planets and stars with the merest contact. In the 18th century, Autobots on Cybertron were able to compute its trajectory and deduced that in the near future it would pass close to Earth. The Autobot cassettes Raindance and Grand Slam were dispatched to the planet to warn of its coming, but their ship crash-landed and they were left damaged, stuck in tape mode. Found by a crew of pirates, the tapes eventually wound up in a treasure chest in a shipwreck on the bottom of the Caribbean Sea. In the present day, the Decepticons discovered the lost Autobot tapes, and from them learned of the Underbase's imminent arrival. Seeking its power for himself, Starscream played the Autobots and Decepticons against each other, luring them into a battle in order to keep them busy while he set off to intercept the Underbase. Realising they had been duped, the two factions joined forces to stop Starscream, but they were too late. Though the light of the Underbase shone on Starscream for only a moment before Optimus Prime shot him out of its path, the power even this brief exposure conferred on him was beyond measure. Seething with cosmic power, Starscream claimed the Earth as his own and set out to subjugate humankind by destroying New York, Tokyo and Buenos Aires. But at every location, he was thwarted by teams of Autobots and Decepticons, who he offlined with his new abilities. Their sacrifice afforded Optimus Prime the time he needed to redirect the Underbase back towards Earth, where Starscream eagerly absorbed the entire thing, only to find, as Optimus had learned long ago, that it was too much for any one being to contain. The energies of the Underbase overloaded Starscream, destroying him and seemingly itself as well. The Underbase saga is primarily remembered for its massive body count. This was Budiansky's way of pruning the comic's oversized cast, phasing out characters from the first three years of the franchise whose toys had been discontinued. The comic had carried out similar deck clearing exercises in the past, dispatching handfuls of characters at a time, but the Underbase saga was unrivalled. Starscream was shown to deactivate the Aerialbots, Jetfire, Hound, Blue Streak, Mirage, Hoist, Brawn, Gears, Goldbug, Jazz, the Seacons, Blaster, the Throttlebots, Thundercracker, Skywarp, the Dinobots, the Predacons, Octane, Astrotrain, Blitzwing, Buzzsaw, Laserbeak, the Technobots, the Terracons, Soundwave, and Omega Supreme. But later stories indicated that even more victims had been taken out off-panel. Newer characters, whose toys were still being sold, such as the Headmasters and Pretenders, survived thanks to their organic components, which proved resistant to Starscream's attacks. 
An epilogue for the saga was produced exclusively for the United Kingdom's version of the comic, in which Decepticons Dreadwind and Darkwing were sent to recover Starscream's dead body from where it had fallen in the Peruvian jungle. There they discovered that his corpse was being animated like a zombie by a lingering trace of underbase energy, but the pair were able to purge the energy and took Starscream's remains back to Megatron, who had him brought back to life. A later UK story saw Megatron travel back in time to Starscream's attack on New York, aiming to save some of the Decepticons from being destroyed, but his efforts to change history were foiled by Prowl. The story of the Underbase was continued over 20 years later in the sequel comic Regeneration 1. This series revealed that long ago, Boltax had been part of a collective of the greatest minds on Cybertron, who all contributed their wisdom to the Underbase. But one of their number, Giaxis, betrayed the rest, stealing from the Underbase the knowledge and power he needed to build his own interplanetary empire, then vanishing into space, erasing all record of himself from both his comrades' memories and the Underbase itself to cover his tracks. Giaxis returned 20 years after the events of the Underbase saga, whereupon it turned out that the ancient database had not been destroyed at its climax after all. As it was composed of pure energy, pure thought, it could never truly be destroyed, and instead had been lying dormant within Starscream, now awakening as it sensed Giaxis's return. Seeking to restore that which he had erased from it, the Underbase possessed Starscream and absorbed Giaxis into itself, then disappeared once more. Now, despite its central role in one of the comic's biggest storylines, the Underbase hasn't really been featured in much media outside the Marvel Universe. It's occasionally referenced here and there, but modern stories usually treat other objects like the life-giving Allspark or the megacomputer Vector Sigma as the ultimate source of knowledge and wisdom on Cybertron. Several series have even shown Optimus Prime doing to the Allspark what he did to the Underbase, launching it into space to prevent its power being misused. Some of the most notable references to the Underbase have come courtesy of the Transformers Collectors Club, inspired by a toy released in the Combiner Wars line in 2016. Cybax was a small Autobot who transformed into a space shuttle and a blaster, and was partnered with the larger bot Scrounge. Drawing inspiration from his name, ending in Axe, and his all-yellow coloration, the club featured Cybax in several stories that connected him to Boltax and the Underbase in different ways. In one story, Cybax was presented as being a new form for Boltax himself, reborn in a new body. Meanwhile, in the mirror universe of Shattered Glass, Cybax was Boltax's successor as custodian of the Underbase, and allied with the evil prime, the Fallen, when he offered him the chance to expand the database with knowledge from other universes. One aspect of the saga that does more frequently recur is the concept of Starscream acquiring incredible power and turning on Autobot and Decepticon alike. Some of the most famous such stories include Transformers Cybertron, when he absorbed the power of the Transformers god Primus himself and grew to the size of a planet, Combiner Wars, in which the power of the divine artifact the Enigma of Combination drove him insane, and Transformers Cyberverse, in which he absorbed the power of the Allspark and, yes, even offlined his own army of followers. And those are the basics on the Underbase and the cosmically powered Starscream. After five years, just one of the many stories I still have left to tell from the world of the Transformers. Whether you're a long-time subscriber or a new viewer, thanks for all your support over the last five years. As ever, if you've enjoyed, like and subscribe, and stick around as the anniversary celebrations continue through the month, when I'll be revisiting and updating some of my oldest episodes.